Mithari, and we're your hosts for the Merry Writer Podcast. This week, we're on episode 238, and we're asking, what should writers consider when working with beta readers? Before we start, if you enjoy the show, consider checking out our coffee page. You can follow the page for free, as we have plenty of freebies for all of you. If you're feeling generous, you can become a Merry Writer for $2 a month. You'll help keep the show going and also have access to bonus episodes and exclusive shop items. But if that's not your style and you still enjoy our podcast, then please subscribe wherever you're listening if you're not already. So in episode 217, we discussed what you should consider before agreeing to be a beta reader. So if you haven't listened to that, go ahead and go listen. Um, I think it's good. I don't know. I don't remember. Uh, But we thought it'd be a good idea to add to that. What? (laughs) I can't even remember that. I'm like, like, 217? And then you were talking about that. I'm like, I have zero memory of that episode at all. Seriously. Well, I, re- I do I remember when, listen. <laughs> when we recorded it, I do remember we were like, this would actually be a good like follow-up episode to talk about, you know, it from the flip side. Rather than you being a beta reader, what about you working with beta readers? And so I think we, but we had so many other podcast ideas in the middle. And that's why it's taken so long for us to get to this point. But here we are. Uh, I mean, spoiler alert, this episode is going to be more or less the same as 217, but from a different perspective. So there's going to be slightly new stuff. Okay. Just, just listen to us. As a writer working with beta readers, you really want to think about who you want as your beta readers. You want to find people you can trust who understand the beta reading and writing process. Um, Ask yourself, do you value their opinions and feedback? Will they give you constructive criticism or just gush about what they love about the story? Which, don't get me wrong, is awfully nice to hear. However, it's not really constructive feedback. Like, you you want the good and the bad when you're working with beta readers. Because the whole point of working with beta readers is to help improve your story and catch little things that you didn't catch. It's just a fresh set of eyes that can help you out and help you improve your books. So quick tip, piggybacking off of that, you want to make sure you're ready to share your manuscript with these people. Uh, Just because your manuscript seems ready for another set of eyes doesn't mean you are ready to share your book, baby. If you find yourself defending your writing style or the book itself, chances are you weren't ready to hear feedback just yet. And of course, you won't need every single suggestion from your beta readers, but you will need a clear head to figure out which suggestions are worth taking for your story and which to leave yeah i think that's why they suggest you should have more than one beta reader even if it's just two or three because that way if all three of them are pointing out the same thing and saying this doesn't work it's a lot harder to defend against three people saying "Uh uh-uh we didn't like that than if it's just one person and you can go well i don't agree you know i mean obviously you can still say that but at least if there's multiple people pointing out the the error you might have to accept that it might be an error (laughs) Well, if there's multiple people pointing it out, then you really need to take a step back and say, okay, why? Why are, why did they not understand what I was trying to get across on the page? But no, you're, you're right about like trusting people, because especially if this is your first book, it can be hard to kind of let go and let somebody else who is not always like the closest person you know, could be someone that you've you've met not that long, especially if you're not big in the writing community and you haven't met writers for a long time. It can be daunting offering up your work, in which case you need to think about how you want to mitigate that, whether that is maybe sharing pieces of it. A lot of the betas I've done, especially with with writers who didn't know me that well, they would send me five chapters at a time. And I think that helped them rather than sending a whole manuscript to someone who they knew about, they'd followed my blog, they'd listened to our podcast, but they weren't like you know, busy mates with me. We weren't like best friends, in which case they were right to send it in pieces. In fact, even with friends, I would still feel more comfortable sending my manuscript in sections. It also kind of lets you get that feeling of like, you know, if they're not working for you, then you're not having to, you've not sent them everything. I hope that makes sense. But Rachel touched on such a good point when she said like, if you're defending your book, you're not ready for feedback. And I'm laughing because that's the sort of person I am. I get really defensive. I have been working on that over the last few years and I'm nowhere near as bad. I've even, my alpha reader has given me his notes and instead of like having a massive hissy fit, I have actually taken them. And some of them I've been like, yeah, I'm not doing that. And others are like, damn, that's a good a good point. 
you need to be ready with how you deal with it and if they're friends you have to make sure that you and them have strong enough attitudes and personalities to be able to take someone pushing back and saying oh I didn't like that as Rachel said you don't want someone just going oh my god it's the best but you do want someone who will point out good things you need some good as well don't just get someone who's only going to nitpick the bad things you want someone to say I love this chapter or this line was oh my god it was perfect but the people you pick do they have the strength to say to you I didn't like that I hate that character that doesn't work or are they too friendly and won't want to upset you or hurt you and you know you you can hope that they will be and obviously you might never you might never know but you need to think about that or at least you need to give them space and be, tell them very clearly like it's okay it's okay to break my heart about my book <laughs> No, that's that's a really good point. You don't want to have somebody be too friendly and too afraid to tell you the truth, pretty much. Because, I mean, that kind of goes along with what I was saying. You, you need to be able to trust them enough that they're not just reading your book so that when you publish it, they can say, I read the first draft of this and like have it be bragging rights for them. Because believe it or not, there are people out there like that. And they very well could be your best friend. And you know, right or wrong, probably not somebody you want to be beta reading and giving you constructive feedback. I know if you have a newsletter, a lot of authors who start newsletters, they will ask for betas through the newsletter because a lot of it's like, if you have given someone your email address, you know, if, if, if someone, sorry, if someone has given you their email address, it's kind of a, a big sense of like, I trust you with the stuff you send me in my inbox. So I know a lot of authors sort of like reward the followers of their newsletter and they'll set up a Google form and be like, hey, you want to be a beta reader? But again, just because someone follows your newsletter, just because someone likes you and what you, the content you put out, it shouldn't automatically be a big tick. Yeah, this person gets to beta. They still need to be the right person for your manuscript and for you. So yeah, that's just a, just a thought. And make sure you vet them well if you do decide to do that, um, because especially if you don't know them all that well and you haven't like talked to them too much, uh, because it's the internet and we're all strangers with each other. Ari and I know each other very well, but we also don't know each other at all. We've never met in person. So if you have a Google form, make sure that you ask your beta readers who are applying to be a beta reader to list their website and social media links and stuff like that so that you can kind of get to know them and just give them a quick check up before you agree to give them your book baby because there is nothing worse than having somebody you know steal your work because again that happens too I'm not saying it happens all the time or often but it can happen you just got to be cautious with that stuff yeah it, it is one of those things it might be rare but when it happens it, it just saying well it was rare isn't enough for the person whose work got stolen so it's, again, another reason why maybe don't send everything all at once. Right, exactly. But when you do find beta readers to work with, you want to make sure that you help your beta readers be well prepared. And by that, I mean, be as clear as possible to your betas about what you need from them. Leave notes behind within the manuscript around certain scenes that you're iffy about. Don't be vague. Give them a list of questions or a survey of sorts about what to keep an eye out for during their read. Uh, for example, do you want them to note any typos, spelling, or grammar errors? Do you want their opinion about the overall pacing and flow of the story? Is the protagonist likable and relatable? What are their overall thoughts of the book? Would they recommend it to a friend? Be creative and ask them to write a review uh, using a five-star rating system. Um, off the record, of course. But if they were leaving a review on Amazon, what would it say and what would the rating be? And I feel like that would be an excellent way to get their like raw reaction to the overall book. Obviously they would leave notes within the manuscript as they read through it. But I think if you ask them to leave like an off the record review, you can see the whole picture in one paragraph. That's a really good point. I never thought about that. Asking them for kind of like a, a fake review. Fake as in they're not actually putting it on there, but. I've never done it. <laughs> I thought of it when I was writing my notes for this episode. <laughs> It's a good idea, though. So if you do try it or if you actually have done it before, let us know in the comments how it worked. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I would like to know that as well. Because as you said, it like it's like a, a condensed summary of the bits that they like the most. Spoiler free, I think. <laughs> oh, well, I suppose if it's not going anywhere, it's with spoilers, which bit they really love. Um, but yeah, I have to admit, when I when my manuscript, um, I always write notes at the end of every chapter of things that I mean they're mostly for me, but I left them in for my alpha. Certain ones I'll be leaving for my beta. I also have a habit of bolding things where I'm like, and I just bold it and it's like, I'm not sure. I can't tell if it's a good line. I can't tell if it's clunky. I don't know if it explains it, but there's too much thought with it. So there'll literally be a note that says, bolded area, not sure about. Um, I like. I always mention that I am from the UK because the number of people in the US who have spell checked some of my short stories and corrected my spelling of color or neighbor and it's like oh bless no no sorry no so yeah you you, you do want to think about things like that the level of detail and something else i might want to point out if you are writing a multiple book multiple series um trilogy whatever you might want to ask whether they would be willing if they like the book if they enjoyed it if they'd be willing to be a beta for the other two that way if they are a good beta and it is a good fit then you're you've got someone who can read the second book without and they've already read the first because while you can do beta readings on book two and book three or you can give um book one for free to the to a new beta who wants to uh, read book two i find it easier if you can get a couple of betas that can stay with you through a series now obviously if it's a trilogy a duology that's fine i think if it's starting to get like four or five six books plus in you might be asking a lot <laughs> so and obviously, if some of those books are published, then you you can already get betas who have already read the books themselves without having to have betaed every single book. But it is something to consider, because if you can get a few people who will be willing to beta through at least two or three books of a series, that's pretty good. That's a good point, too. It's, and, and it's kind of like a sticky situation almost because, yeah, you don't want to give them too, too much work. But there are ways that you can you can be creative in how you thank your beta readers I know that there have been some authors who have given like book baskets to their beta readers. If their betas are okay with giving out their physical like mailing address. And obviously not everybody has to do that because that costs money and things like that. But there are different ways that you can kind of pay your beta readers back. And I mean, some beta readers will accept just straight payment too, but that's another type of a conversation. Yeah, I have to admit, I, I did beta for um one of my friends. And when I after I betaed, when the book came out, they actually sent me a hard copy of the book and I wasn't expecting that. Um, And that was a really nice thing. But again, they didn't have to do that. I was happy to to buy it and everything. But it was a nice thing that they just sort of, and they sent all their betas because obviously we were all in their acknowledgements and they sent their betas. I think it might even been a signed copy as well, which was very nice of them. So... But yeah, again, obviously, international posts can be really expensive. So, you know, I don't think anyone expects that. And obviously, if people are expecting some sort of gift or freebie or fucking basket or money, that might be something you 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 think about. Because I would rather surprise someone and send it than go, uh, you know, so have someone go, can I get a free copy afterwards? It's like, ah, uh, feels a bit weird. That's also another sticky situation. You want to make sure that they're doing it because they want to and they're genuinely interested in your work and they're doing it out of the goodness of their heart rather than just trying to get a free copy of something out of you. So that's also something that you want to consider when choosing your beta readers. Um, but finally, once you have your beta readers and you know, you're helping them be well prepared, you also want to ask them what they need from you, which is just basically more transparency. Uh, talk about which format they want the manuscript in and how they, and also you, prefer they'd make their notes. What's their deadline? Give them a few months if you can and ensure that's something they can work with. But also remind them that they can reach out to you anytime if they need an extension for any reason. Be clear that you can give it to them. Because remember, they are doing you a favor. They're taking time out of their day and schedule to help you out. So make the process as simple and easy for them as possible. Yeah, and I'm just going to point out, because <laughs> I'm kind of in that place at the moment, do let them know important things, like how long the manuscript is. 
because a lot of people have an assumption. So if you say, I have, I've finished a manuscript, a lot of people think, well, 50, 80,000 words. My current one is 130,000. I am not going to just drop that on any poor beta without letting them know how big this mammoth thing is and then letting them decide whether they want to give that much time. And so so just something else, if they are new to betering, because, you know, we all have to start somewhere. If they have never done betering before and they're a really good reader, you need to let them know that just because they can read a large book in like a week, they're going to need longer. Because I've had that with people where they're like, oh, yeah, I'm such a fast reader. And it's like that that doesn't matter. It's not reading. It's reading and analyzing and re and leaving feedback. And that takes time. I took that mistake when I did my first beta. I was like, yeah, I read really well. I'm fine. But you're on a computer or a tablet, depending on how you do it, and you're reading and you're having to analyze what you're reading. You're having to go, hmm, not really sure. Why did that not work? No, I didn't like that. Or, Wait, did did he did he have his sword in the last scene? Go back. Ah, he didn't. I need to make a mention of that. It's, it's a back in and forward in. There's other information. You're reading notes. You're thinking about things. It's not the same as, well, I read a book in three days. This isn't going to be three days. It's going to be a lot longer. So make sure they're aware of things like that, especially if they are new, because you don't want them to uh, overstretch themselves and then miss your deadlines and everything. I think that's something that you need to be really clear about when you reach out to them about beta reading your novel, because I think when you ask betas, you should kind of pitch your novel in the same way that you would pitch an agent or a publisher or something. Lay out all the specs the amount of words, the page count, the genre, any trigger warnings, any subgenres, like just literally lay it all out. Obviously include the blurb, the title, all that stuff. Let them know about that. This might be a multiple book deal that if you're, if you better read this book and you enjoyed it and you like the process, would you be interested in doing the next book and so on and so forth? And yeah, that's, and just give them, here's your deadline. And this is what I'm asking you to do. Like, please take your time with it. <laughs> do not rush. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Definitely. Because it's and, and be aware of anyone who says something like, oh, it's fantasy. I'm sorry. When you're dealing with betas, arc readers, reviewers, anything like that, you need subcategories. Fantasy sci-fi is a huge umbrella. I mean, there are different categories and you should know your subcategories, especially if you're thinking about publishing, because you need to know those subcategories to get to sort of like drill down in things like Amazon. So is it steampunk? Is it um, romanticy? Is it roman? Yeah, romanticy that they call it. Roman yeah, yeah, whatever. Anything like that. Let people know. Let them know the spice level because not everybody likes spice. Some people like so much spice, they don't like it if there's no spice. Anything like that. But I'm going to, Put one final thing in for myself, my notes. Be okay to let people go. Just because you said yes to a beta doesn't mean you have to let them finish the whole book um, if they're not going to, if, if it doesn't work for you. Not everybody is going to be the perfect beta for you. They could end up giving you notes and you're thinking, you're not catching anything. Or just, yeah, this is great. Or I didn't like it. Why? I don't know. I didn't like it. Anyone who gives you feedback that doesn't help and if it's most of the novel, then they're not really a fit for you. And while it's nice to let people do it, that's not what it's there for. It's not nice to let people read your book. It's about getting your work stronger and cleaner and ready. So, yeah. And they should be allowed the same with you. Leave a nice space. So if they turn around and go, you know what? I, I don't think I can finish this or it's not really the thing I'm interested in. There's not enough plot. The characters aren't doing it for me they should feel okay to part ways with you. Again, this is why I like the idea of sending it in pieces. That way they haven't got the full manuscript. After a few chapters, they should know whether or not it's something they want to read. And then be okay with that. Yes, you might have to find other betas. And it doesn't always happen very often, but it can happen. Um, don't feel that you have to hold on to people. You know, And it should you should both end it politely and professionally. There shouldn't be any hard feelings. You shouldn't be annoyed at anyone. You know, nobody's wasting your time. That's why you should let them have a space to say, it's just not for me. I'm sorry. I'm going to back out. All right. So yeah. be friendly and polite. It's not hard. It is the mature thing to do. And I like fully agree with that. And I think something that you could do when the beta reading process is all over, you can probably give your beta readers a survey of sorts 
And you can ask book specific questions if you want, like their overall likes and dislikes on it. Or you can just say, how was your experience? Was I good at being transparent with you? Was I clear with the deadlines? Did I support you well enough throughout the whole series? Did I give you what you needed? Was I uh, there whenever you emailed me? Things like that. You can just ask them general questions like, what can you do differently to make the next beta reading experience go smoothly? And you can do the same thing for your beta, for yourself. Like give yourself a survey about each beta reader and what they gave to you or what they didn't give to you. You don't need to share it with them, but just do an evaluation on your own and in your head and ask yourself, would I want this person reading my next book? Whether it's a sequel or not, just in general. And that's kind of another way that you can kind of let people go as well, because if they're not really fitting your needs and you're not really clicking with each other, you can just say, you know, they're out of the batch. Next book you come out with, just have a new batch of beta readers come in. And if some of them are the same as the previous one, then you know what? That's fine. You you got to do what's best for your book, pretty much. I concur. I'm glad you concur. And with that, I think that's a good ending for this episode because clearly we've talked about all that we can possibly talk about until we come up with new things for maybe a bonus episode or something. But anyway, we're going to turn it over to you guys. Have you worked with beta readers before and how did you set up the process? Let us know your answers in the comments so we can chat about it. And remember, we release a new episode every Wednesday. Next week, we're discussing how to make your story exciting. So to ensure you don't miss it, don't forget to hit the subscribe button on your way out. As always, thank you very much for listening to the Merry Writer Podcast. We will see you guys next week. This podcast is brought to you by Reams of Paper. We're killing trees. The music titled Inspired is by Kevin McLeod, licensed under Creative Commons 4.0.